All right, there we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to coffee. I need a refill and art in the morning. I'm Dee Dee, and I got some happy mail. Um, I'll show you some things I've done in my Anamorphia color book. And I, but first, we're going to do happy mail. And I also got this How to Be a Dog. <laughs> from Michael o O'Mara in UK it's a uh, it's a, 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 a publisher and they're also the ones that publish Anamorphia so if y'all don't follow them go follow Michael O'Mara on Twitter and you will find all kinds of other cool books and book publishers through them they're real it's just t tons and tons of books and inspiration and uh they also just posted this morning that there's a new animal book coming out in November. Enabler alert. Where's Eileen? <laughs> Enabler alert. <laughs> so thanks everybody for being here. I say good morning to everybody before I hit record. Um, except we Hootie comes in late. Every morning she comes in late. No. <laughs> so anyway, thanks everybody for being here. And uh, yes, I have had my coffee, Deb. I've had more than a pot of coffee. We get up early around here. You know, I've been, uh, I've been up for some hours by the time you see me stream at 9 a.m. Anyway, so I have happy mail show. I wanted to read a couple of excerpts out of this real quick. I'm not, I'm, I thought about maybe like start my streams off with a, something funny out of this book. Because it is hilarious. I'm just going to read a couple things. Uh <laughs> Beeline Facts, 10 Things Every Dog Needs to Know About Cats. I love this one right here. <laughs> when a cat arches its back, it's a sign it's being threatened and is about to attack. It is not an open invitation for you to try to run underneath of it. <laughs> they can squeeze into places you can only dream about. Do not try to emulate them. Uh, they can get away with murder. For example, a cat jumping on a table to eat the remains of a chicken dinner is cute. If you try it, it's dirty. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. And then the other one that I just want to quickly just read a couple out of. And what it is, is from the dog's point of view. From the dog's point of view. And it's broke out alphabetically in all kinds of topics. Like um, that was under cats. This one's under costumes, and it just has tons and tons. I'll read a couple of the topics to you, um, but like, for instance, costumes, reindeer ears, and I'm not even reading the, the paragraph about it. I'm just reading some of the little bits. Not strictly a costume as such. This is more an accessory that clips to your head and makes it look like Dr. Frankenstein was busy with you and Rudolph. <laughs> the Christmas Elf. Very demeaning. Green felt is so 1980s. <laughs> well, anyway, and then they just have all kinds of things. Um, drool. Um, calories and under exercise. Calories that are burned. Kennel names. Grooming. Um, and and I, I love the little illustrations. And I did find the uh, illustrator on Twitter as well and followed her. And uh, so, anyway, it's just so, so stinking cute. Let me see. Needy owners. Puppy dog eyes. How to make puppy dog eyes. Tilt your head down. Think of something really sad. Raise your eyes so, so you're looking through your lashes. Hunch your shoulders. Keep shifting your weight from one paw to the other. That's what my grandkids do. <laughs> oh. oh, shoes, sleeping, smelling things, squirrels. Uh oh, Carrie, I don't know if I should read that one to you. Um, <laughs> there are two things you need to know about squirrels. <clears throat> one, no matter how hard we try and fight the feeling, we instinctively want to chase and catch them. Two. No matter how hard we try, we never can. <laughs> but all the little illustrations, everything's so cute. I just think it's hilarious. Hilarious. The doggy do list. Wake up, sleep, forward stretch, yawn, backward stretch, drink. And it's a little checklist, you know. Scratch left ear, 
scratch right here. And it just goes on and on. Toilet paper, vegetables, vets. Um, so I might read a little bit at the beginning of the shows because it's just so stinking cute. So I'm going to have to get this for my mom for Christmas. Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> so anyway, I just, uh, <laughs> just wanted to point that out to you. It's really, really so funny. So funny. So thanks for sending that to me, Michael O'Mara. And, um, yeah. They're also the ones that publish Anamorphia, which I've been working in. And I am putting a piece of parchment in between the ones I finished. Here's why. And I want to I'll talk some more about color books. I think I'm going to do a little sample later. I, I know I've shown it briefly in, in between different shows where I want to test out different things and what color pencil does with the different things. I might do, do us a little, I told y'all to do a little chart, but I didn't make me one because I kind of know what they do because I work with them all, but I might do a little chart with that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got done so far. But the reason I want to put parchment between the ones that I've already finished, like for instance here. So I finished these two owls. I did post pictures of it on Twitter and Instagram and in my Facebook color book album. I did make an album if y'all didn't already go look at it. I made an album on Facebook that's public. Anybody can go look at it. You don't have to follow me on Facebook to go look at it. And... Um, I just put in everything color book related, new color books, color books I finish, color books I talk about, pages, what to do with color books. I, li I linked a video, one of my YouTube recordings from here, you know, that we upload to YouTube on how to do things with the color books and stuff like that. So I just made a whole album um, of color books in Facebook so you can go kind of just look at that. But anyway, the reason I want to put a piece of parchment or something, even just a piece of paper, parchment's just thin and it does the job, is because now if I go to color, say, on this page, if I start bearing down with color pencil on this side, these two pages are going to start, um, you know, getting on each other. So if you have something between it, if I start bearing down on here, it'll just get on the parchment, not on the pe next page. So you want to have some, in between the pages that you finish, okay? You don't want this, this uh, color pencil, crayon, or whatever you're using to be smashed onto the, this side. So if you put a piece of paper in between, when you work on this page, it won't mess up the, those two pages, okay? Uh, and it's always good to have something behind, like whenever you're working on, like if I'm working on here, just to have something behind this so that, larger of course, but have something behind here so you're also not denting the next page. Now, my pages are getting a little wrinkled, and that's because of the technique I'm using in this particular book of acrylic washes. Because of the big areas that I want to wash out, um, not wash out, but put a wash of color on, uh, it will wrinkle. And that's why I told y'all, if you don't want wrinkled pages, don't do large washes of color. But in this book, I'm really, I want large washes of color, so I'm not being concerned about the little bit of wrinkle that it's getting, and I'm just rolling with it. So uh, if you have any questions, put them in caps. So again, let me show you what I've done so far. So far, I've only done a few washes and I think maybe two and a half, three pages in here so far. So this is what I mean by the wash. Okay, so right here I took two colors of acrylic paint. You can do it with watercolor or your neo colors or whatever. But I like to use, a th if I'm going to do color pencil, the wash, the acrylic gives you a tooth to your paper, okay? A little bit of something for your color pencil to grab onto. <clears throat> Somebody did ask me on YouTube if I gesso, clear gesso, white gesso. I never really, honestly, guys, and it's very rare that I use gesso on anything. 
in art journals, on color books, on my poor, I just do not use gesso really at all on anything. Not white gesso, not black gesso, not clear gesso. If I want to get a coat of white on something, I just use acrylic paint. If I want a coat of black on something, I just use black acrylic paint. Uh, I know there's different properties and benefits to using gesso to seal your pages for different purposes. Uh, you know, some of the stencil techniques that Paula uses and stuff like that. I don't really do those techniques, and so I don't really, I just don't use gesso. So just to answer that question. But in this case, this is this color and... Another. So I just took two colors of my acrylic paint, watered them down a little bit, and again, I always say, don't water your acrylics down. Well, if you want to do a wash, you know, you you can water it down. But the main reason I tell you not to do that is because, for one, on the large area, it's going to wrinkle. That's the, that's the problem with using watered down acrylic paint. It will wrinkle your pages. And uh, so you have to be prepared that if you're going to do this, what I'm doing here, your pages will wrinkle, okay? <laughs> you just got to either don't do this technique uh, or, you know. Now, acrylic paint, watered down acrylic, light, like in just a tiny little area, like right here and that, it's not going to do, it's not going to wrinkle it. But I'm doing a full-on wash of this paint, and so it will wrinkle. Okay, so if y'all have any questions, ask. I'm trying to cover everything, uh, and I know I've said it all before, but, you know, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> y'all know me when I'm doing something. I'll repeat because that's the process I'm working it out. Okay, so <clears throat> then I also had a question on do I go back over the black areas? And, and most of the times I do. Now, I did not go back over the black areas when I tried to wash out those fairies. Let me show you here. When I tried to wash out these girls right here, I wanted these fairies that I, I colored out of the other book, the fairy book, and cut them out and put them on a scrapbook paper. I wanted the, the black to be very grayed out. So like those dots, they're really black in the book and they're black if I wanted to go back over over them like I will on here. But in this case, I was trying to gray it out to make it fit with the scrapbook paper, which has no harsh black. So that's why that's kind of faded out. Same for this one. I Instead of keeping that dark, dark black, I went over it with the light blue to gray it out because there's no harsh black in the background, okay? But other than wanting to gray it out for a per this kind of purpose, I will go back over that to make it dark again. So the qu answer to the question is yes, I do go back over the dark black areas with a black pencil, okay? So hope that answers that question. All right, so and you can see it's a little wrinkled, but again, I'm not letting that bother me in this case. So I've already gone through and showed this book, so I just want to, all right, so here is the same page here, you know, just the full double page spread, where I've done the same thing with the wash of those two uh, watered down acrylic paints. But again, see the wrinkle? See it all wrinkled up there? <clears throat> But by the time I do both sides of the page, it's kind of like my art journal where I'm, I'm adding tons of layers of collage and mixed media and paint and collage and all kinds of stuff, matte medium. You know, by the time I get done, same thing for the art cards. You would think that it would be, you know, you could, the same thing even in a composition book. By the time you get all this, you know, work done on it, both sides done, the wrinkling is not going to show that much. It, it sounds, I like the way it actually, I kind of like the way it sounds. It kind of is a little, you know, more crispy sounding because of the wrinkles. All right, so I did this one last week, just did a wash of the blue-gray just to kind of, again, show you how it starts. Okay, so it's just a wash of gray, and now I'll go back in there with color pencil and do the shading and blending. All right, so here's some cheetahs here, just a wash of ochre over them, and then let's see what else. The lion face, just a, this is just a wash of ochre, 
because that's just like the base. It's just like the base that I'm going to work on top of. Okay. Am I, does it sound? Oh, you're still talking about something else? Okay. So again, this is the one that I just finished um, a few couple days ago. I think, when did I post this? I don't know, maybe I, I, po I posted it like the, uh, maybe yesterday. Anyway, it took a couple days. I just work on these things in between other projects. If I'm on the phone, if I'm watching a YouTube video, or just, you know, I'm not in the middle of another commission or a portrait or, you know, something else, then I'll just pick up my pencils and just work on it a little bit. In this case, the black background is all black acrylic paint with a, a coat of black color pencil over the acrylic paint and then white acrylic stars. The dots are white acrylic stars. And again, it, it does look a little flat. There we go. There's the, more of the color. It does look a little flashed out because I got five lights on us right now. So it does kind of flash the color out. But if I tilt it, you can kind of see it coming out of focus. There we go. And again, the reason I'm going to keep some paper in between the finished pages is so that when I go to work on this side, I'm not transferring the pencil from here over to that, that page. All right, let's see what else do I have in here. Let's kind of start. Okay, here again is a wash of uh, like a couple of shades of blue, Blue Harbor on the whale. And then we have a wash of purple on these octopus. And then here are the, uh, I want to say lizards, not iguan iguanas, maybe iguanas. That This was the first completed one that I did in this book. And again, black acrylic paint with black pencil over it. No, I do add water in, with acrylic paint washes in this book, Marilyn. I do thin it out and add a wash, but it wrinkles. That's why I always tell you if, you know, and, and if I'm doing a portrait, if I'm doing like a, a commission and I'm doing the hair, let's say, I'm doing the hair, a base coat of a, well, not green. <laughs> if I'm doing a, a base coat of hair, I don't water my acrylics down. I like them not watered down. Now, sometimes I have to add a little water here on Ustream because the lights dry it out real fast. But other than the, a wash of acrylic in this book, which wrinkles, that's the whole point, guys. It will wrinkle your pages when you water down your acrylics and put a wash. Well, even if you did a watercolor wash in a big area, it's going to wrinkle your color book pages. I can't stress that enough. I don't want y'all saying, oh, my pages got wrinkled. I'm telling y'all, I'm warning y'all. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, all right. So anyway, the black here is acrylic, not watered down, okay? the A black acrylic that I just kind of, maybe a drop of water in there to keep it rolling, but, you know, I'm not, this is not a wash, okay? That's not a wash like this, okay? This is one color watered down, and it makes a watercolor effect with your acrylic paints, which gives your color pencil two. Okay, I, I, I use acrylic paints as a base coat in my like clothing and the hair in my art. Let me give you another example. I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so for instance, in this portrait, I base coated her hair with black. I base coat her shirt with black acrylic paint not watered down, not a wash. I don't want this wrinkled. If I watered down the black acrylic paint, it would wrinkle like this, okay? I don't want that wrinkled. This is just solid black acrylic paint and the color pencil on top, same for here. The faces, however, there's no acrylic paint. It's all, except like maybe a white highlight in the eye, but the, there's no like base coating on the skin, okay? 
Um, I don't know why I'm explaining all this to you. It's not like y'all are going to want to do, you know, I don't know. I just, I, that's just the way I roll. I try to explain everything to you guys. Okay, same thing for here. Okay, so this guy, I did a base coat of pink and uh, a tan, all right, for the hat. I did a base coat of a light brown and a dark brown for his clothes. Not a wash, okay? I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to uh, distinguish between how I use color uh, acrylics in my portraits versus what I'm doing here. It's two totally different techniques. Although they're both using acrylic, I mean a uh, color pencil on top of acrylic paint. But this is not a wash. This is dry, straight from the tube, straight from the jar, the bottle, whatever, acrylic paint not a wash okay so i'm watching she just washed away yes i just washed this is just on the octop the purple is only on the octopus uh, maybe you can't see that the purple is just on the octopus not on everything i don't, I'm, i think i might be confusing am i confusing you guys sorry i don't mean to i'm trying to you know i just don't want y'all to get bad results when you try any of these techniques I don't want you to do a wash and get everything wrinkled and think, oh, you didn't tell me. <laughs> yeah, so in, in the, my portraits, the, the, there would be acrylic paint here and here and then color pencil on top. The faces, there's no acrylic paint. It's all pencil except maybe the dot in the eye, you know, the highlight in the eye. It could be an acrylic, you know, highlight. But everything else is pencil. All right, so I just want to kind of distinguish between not a wash and a wash, okay, using acrylic paint. I'm going to do a little chart here in a little bit. I'm going to do plain, solid color acrylic, a wash of acrylic. I'm going to use some, you know, color pens, I mean, uh, neo colors, water colors and all that, and then put color pencil over it so you can see the different things. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Sarah says, I'm picking up what you're putting down. My daughter puts it another way. My daughter says, I smell what you're stepping in. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Yes, Wee Hootie. Thank you. Yes, don't email me. Thank you, we Thank you, Julie. And hi, by the way. Okay. But I wanted to be very clear on that because... When you water down your acrylic paints or use a wash of watercolor in a big area. Now, it's not going to do this if you're just doing one of these little bitty doodles. You can water that down in a little bit of doodle. But if I'm doing a full-on wash, you know, like that, like the right, or this here. It's a full-on, I'm getting the paper really wet. And it does wrinkle. So that's the other <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but look how, it, it, you can't really tell this is wrinkled by the time I got completely done, because there's a layer of color pencil on just about everything. Well, there is a layer of color pencil on everything, okay, because even the black that I did with acrylic paint, I still went in there with the color pencil in those tight areas, those little tight areas like that, and like that, and like that. I got in there with color pencil. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing at what everybody's saying in chat. What's, what's said in chat stays in the chat most of the time. All right. So anyway, for instance, on him, I did a wash of lime green and a wash of, you know, a, a, a like a teal, you know, light teal. Well, there we go. All right. But then again. I'm going to say this again, too. Make sure it's 100% dry, 100% dry before you start going in there with color pencil and shading, okay? <laughs> Make sure it's 100% dry before you start going in there with color pencils, or you'll either dent the paper, rip the paper, 
it, it just doesn't work. Trust me. Color pens, Prisma colors. Now you could go in there with watercolor pencils and you'd get an effect, okay? But if you're just going to go in there with plain old color pencil, Prisma, whatever kind you're using, make sure your underpainting is dry. Dry. Can't stress that enough. Of course, like I said, all it takes is one time for you to take a color pencil, dig through your paper, and make a hole. That, you know, it only takes one time for you to do that, and you won't do it again. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So that's uh, that. Okay, now let me go ahead and, oh, here's the one I'm working on now. All right. This is what I'm working on now. I base coated all around the snakes with the dark green. And then I went in there with a color pencil on some and then with brighter yellow highlights. I just wanted a kind of a pattern of grass. And I, want, I did not want it perfect. So I kind of purposely made some thick or thin. I wanted it to look kind of random, but I wanted it to look like a pattern. So the, ba the base coat is all dark green. It's a uh, Hauser dark green. Okay. Then I went over that, and in the little tiny areas with where's my uh, with a green pencil, dark green. So, like for instance, I'd get in like right in the little points, you know, uh, around the little doodles with a dark green color pencil. Then I went over it with a yellow color pencil. Whoops, the thing just broke. Hang on. Then I went over the the acrylic because it's acrylic paint the color the pencil will go right on it okay but i wanted some areas to look a little bit more painterly so i went in there with some yellow paint in certain areas just to give it a just some kind of different background now i'm not done with the snakes they are just base coated all right, all the snakes, the color you see is just watered down acrylic washes. Can you see? These are not colored yet. They're not shaded. They're not colored. Nothing's been done with them except a wash. So this is not, this is far from done. You know, I still got hours of work on this. But what I'll do is, and I, I will get to my Happy Meal here in a minute sidetracked with the explanations um, what I'll do is see if I can hold this up so you see the little snake skin the little scales what I'll do now is I'll go in there with a color pencil and go around every scale with and I'm barely touching I am barely touching the acrylic wash is grabbing the pencil but now I'll go around every scale and start shading okay but because there's an acrylic wash on there see how kind of really it's kind of going kind of fast can you kind of see how fast that's going then maybe I'll do a little shadow under the scales there okay so I'll just go in there now around every scale Then shade up underneath the bottom of the snake there. That's his stomach right there. Okay. And then you can also go in there and blend out. Blend, like take another, like the light olive green. Let's see if I can grab one right here. Um, here, let me sharpen this one. Is that, is that olive? No, that's not. Hang on. Yeah. So then I'll take, go in there after I've done every scale, and then I'll go in there with an olive green that's almost the same color as the wash, and then I can just kind of blend each scale like that, and just kind of blend it in each one. See? See the difference between that and that? Take 
take a picture before the snakes to compare the after with the pencil. Okay, that's a good idea, Lynn. Excellent idea. I'll do that. So that's what that's the detail that gets added on top of the washes. This is all washed, that's all washed, this is all just a wash so far. Every bit of that. Okay, nothing's been colored with color pencil yet. This is where you come in with these details, and I know it's not going to want to, I have the autofocus off. But this is where you come in here with all these details. Okay, with your color pencil. Yeah, that's a good idea, Lynn. I will take a picture before I, I uh, do the detail. Okay, so then, let's see, I got, oh, uh, Eileen's not here, is she? Uh, there's going to be a uh, flamingo alert. So, again, I started these roosters right here. I have little bits. Oh, there's a wash, okay? It's a big wash of uh, lime green on this uh, lizard here. And can you see the wrinkle? I don't know if you can see the wrinkle. This is the same kind of thing. Okay, so what I would do is I would take, all right, let me show you before and after. All right, so like right around that, the gill. Okay, I'm going to go in here with a lightly, and I don't bear down with my color pencils. Say, neither do I do that with any kind of pencil work. It's lots of layers, not a lot of, uh, you know, don't do that because you'll dent your page and, uh, and all that. You want to have a, a soft hand. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of the olive green and kind of blend out that. So I just want to kind of get y'all to see. It's a little bit more dark green there. Because if y'all are going to do this, you know, I, I want everybody to be happy with their art, whatever kind they're doing. If it's something I can help that they're not, you're not going to, you know, be unsatisfied with all the hours of work you put in. Okay, so there's a start. See how I'm starting to blend a couple shades of green? And see how I'm just blending all the way out on the top here. Okay. Then I can go back in there and pick out some of those uh, little scales. You don't have to pick out every one either. You can just pick out some. Or you can do them all, just depending on how tedious you want you feel you want to get. You know, because it can be. You gotta this has got to be something that you love to do. Like, well, to me, it's like any other, you know, any other thing you put your creativity in. If you're not liking it, it's not going to turn out. Uh, you're you're going to be frustrated. You're not going to enjoy it. If you can't enjoy the process, it's time to find something else that you will enjoy the process. Because if you're just after the end result and you're not enjoying the coloring part or whatever part, the process part, if you're not enjoying the process part, you won't be, one, it won't turn out as well as if you did, and two, you won't be doing it long. You, you won't be, you won't, you'll do about two, three color book pages and then you'll have a stack of color books because you won't like it. You will not, if you don't enjoy the coloring process, I'm telling you, you'll just, you'll own a lot of color books, which, you know, hey, if you want to collect them, that's fine. But <laughs> if you want to color in them, if you don't enjoy doing it, I'm just saying, you know, because you'll get bored, you'll get frustrated. You'll go, oh gosh, I've got to hurry up and get this done. I don't like it. I'm, I want to finish, you know. So there you go. So there's those gills. Okay. So, so it went from like this right here to that. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy this color book too. All right. So let me see. Oh, I got flamingos coming up. Eileen's not here. Okay. <laughs> so you can see there's a lot in it. Lots, lots, lots in it. And I think the only thing I really don't like about it and that people have complained about is that the the it's uh, one image cutting into the you know into the crevice there. That's the only thing that I've heard people that don't don't like about this particular 
you know, book is that it's, you know, you got to work into the crevice. And then here's the flamingos that I'm working on. Again, you can see there's the acrylic paint. Okay. But then now watch when I take, let me find the black color. And this is, it might be TMI for anybody that doesn't do color books. This is by way TMI. All right, but I wanted to show you here. Okay, so for instance, I need something to put under here. I need a clipboard. Hang on. I'm at the back of the book, and there's no uh, nothing to push on. Okay, so see where the acrylic paint is just not fully flattened there? What I do anyway is I take the whole page. Let's see how I can hold this. I'll take the whole page, all the black. Now, you'll be able to probably tell the difference here. And just put a light coat of color pencil over the whole thing. Same thing I did with the green on the background of the snakes. And that puts a whole coat of color pencil over the whole thing. It may be not showing up. Uh, and then you can also get in those little tiny details that you probably didn't get in there with your brush. Okay, get in there with those tiny details. But you put a whole coat of pencil over the whole thing. And that kind of smooths it out. Anyway. Okay, I'll, um, I won't torture you all anymore. <laughs> I mean, if, like I said, if you're not really into doing this, you, it's like, okay, enough with the color books. But I mean, there's a lot of us that really enjoy it. So again, pink, this is all just a pink wash. Now, the, one of the benefits about a pink or a, a light wash, let me see if I can do one more real quick for you. I'm going to do one quick demo here. We will do a, uh, I want to do a little chart thing for y'all in a little bit, but let me find something like, uh, all right, well, here's the, where's the elephant? Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick show why I like to do the, the wash not only just for the sake of the uh, pencil, but you can get, just like a watercolor, you can get multiple shades. All right, let's, oh, you know what? My water is very, let me just put some water in here because my water, I need to clean out my water thing is dirty and I don't want to get black in here. All right, so I'm just going to pick up a little water in, a, in the gray, okay? Now it's watered down, all right? Now I'm going to go over here to the elephant, and again, I want it really, I don't want to cover up. I want it thin enough that it's not going to cover up solid all these little lines. Okay, so again, I'm going to just kind of water down will give you different shades of gray here, or whatever color. But it's also wrinkling the book, the page because it's a lot of water. Okay, it's a lot of water. It's not just in a tiny little area. Okay, so it gives me a quick. See how fast I'm going? I don't want it to like um, not blend. You have to kind of do it fast so it kind of all blends together. Otherwise, if you take too much time, let me sh let me do an area here. Okay, so I'm going to do, all right, so let's just say I did that area right there, and I want to do a wash across the whole thing. All right, so now I'm waiting a minute. If I wait too long, okay, if I wait too long, and then go in here and get some more, wa more wash, I'm going to run out of water, get some more wash, and try to blend that, it's not going to blend. See that harsh line right there? You're going to get a harsh line. It won't blend out if you don't keep moving. You got to keep moving while it's wet. Or it won't, because you can't get rid of that very easy. I'm scrubbing into it, but remember, this is thin. It's going to start going through if I start scrubbing. This is not watercolor paper. So you got to kind of be quick with this because you can't scrub into it like you can a watercolor paper. Okay, and again, let me come down here on the trunk. What I don't want to do is, whoops, what I don't want to do is this. 
See if I get it too heavy, it covers up the, the lines. See, I'm covering up the color book lines. I don't want to cover up those color book lines. So you want to keep it watery. And then see, I've already kind of covered those up. You want to keep it watery so that you don't cover up the, um, what's his leg? All the color book lines. Uh, does that make sense? Hopefully. All right. See what I'm talking about? Can y'all see all the different shades that I got with just one color? Yeah, I got some ink tints, and I'm going to show y'all. Hey, Paula, I'm going to show ink tints little chart with that as well. So I'm going to do a little bit of all of it. Okay, I guess I should go ahead and do that now, and then maybe just do a separate video for the... I got happy mail to show, and I didn't want to rush through that. So let me go ahead and finish doing this segment, then we'll start another segment. So do y'all have any more questions real quick? See, But you see how it wrinkled? I don't know if it shows up on camera with the gray very much <clears throat> yeah the little mouse on the elephant I know it's cute so you can see how you can get all these different you know variations where's the uh, see how you can get all the different variations in the color just depending on how watered down you get it and again this is just the underpainting to go over the top with your color pencils. But make sure it's dry. So I'm going to take a heat gun to this. <laughs> and it's always, it helps with some of the wrinkling if you do the back side. And that's true of any of your work. If you draw the back and the front, it helps with the wrinkling. And remember, how it, the water, if you get it too wet, see, I can see where it started to come through on here. You've got to really be aware this is thin paper. And that these washes will wrinkle. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say that over and over again because I don't want people going, it's wrinkled, but they, I know. <laughs> That's why we don't do very many things with lots of water in them. And if I do any of my portraits like I showed you earlier, there's not, there are no washes in that. It's just the acrylic paint, you know. So washes on regular old paper is going to wrinkle your paper. And I know that may seem obvious to some people that have done a lot of watercoloring before that it's going to wrinkle. But, you know, I, I, I try to explain whatever, anything I'm thinking about as I'm doing it, just so that it makes it easier for, you know, any, any of the process. All right. So, again, the next thing I have going on back here is the background on the flamingos. Well, And if you're just joining us, the reason I'm putting parchment paper on the finished ones or in between where I'm working is so that like these flamingos here, if I go over and start working on this page and start coloring, this black is going to transfer over onto, you know, here, the color pencil here. So that's why you want to keep something in between if you're, well, if you're working on any page that has a page behind it, it's, it can transfer that pencil. Okay. All right. So that, that there's that real quick. Let me uh, do a quick little, uh, sh a little chart thing showing uh, different mediums. Okay. And then we'll do a, we'll do a separate thing for the happy mail. Again, if y'all missed <laughs> how to be a dog, this is a hilarious book. I read a little bit of it at the beginning. All right, so let me see here. Let's just do a little bit of 
uh, let's pick a pretty color. Everybody likes a teal color, something like that. All right. Um, I am going to have to clean out this. All right. I'm going to have to be, I'll be right back, guys. I've got to get fresh water because it's literally from ink, from my Inktober. So I've got to clean this out. Give me one second. want to be fighting with inky water. Oh, I don't have to. All right. So, real quick now. Still here. Sip of coffee. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do a couple different things here. Let's get, let's just start with some, and this is just uh, desert turquoise. My favorite acrylic paints are Americana. Uh, uh, if you use craft, and that's all I use is craft paint for like the washes or any kind of base coating. When I use acrylic paint, it's, I usually use Americana. I just like the consistency, the colors and all that. But whatever kind of craft paint you use, don't get, not gloss. Gloss is going to give you a, a gloss that your color pencil is not going to stick to the same. Hey, Larkspur Vicky, are you still at Barb's? Um, let me make sure links are open. All right, you know, I repost that, Marilyn. I open links. Links are open, so you can uh, post that, repost that uh, coupon again. All right, I didn't miss. Are you still at Barb's? For those y'all missed it, Vicky was at Barb's a couple days ago. Okay, there's a lag in chat, so I kind of have to wait. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to, I always wet my brushes before I put them in acrylic paint, but I have a paper towels under the water bucket, so I just like sm smash off all the excess water. But my brushes are just damp enough so that the acrylic doesn't like get jammed up in there and get them crispy. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to take just acrylic paint with no water. All right, so I'm going to do a little, like we're going to do a little chart here. All right, so here's just acrylic paint. All right, now I'm going to add a little water here and do a wash. Okay, so now we're going to do a wash. Okay, and we're going to, of course, let everything dry. Now, I want to do a couple other things here, like uh, let's do... Oops, sorry guys. Let's see, this one, this one. All right, so we're going to do a couple little tests. I'm not going to take too long on this, but I want to, uh, I don't want to interrupt the Happy Mail and go back to doing this. All right, so now I'm going to take some Neo Colors, which are Neo Color 2 are water soluble crayons. Okay, Neo Color 1 are just wax crayons. They're high quality, pigmented, but they're not water soluble. So if you want water soluble ones, make sure it says Neo Color 2 water soluble. All right, so now I'm just going to get a kind of a close teal color. And I'm just going to do a little chart here to show you what happens when you go over it with color pencil after it's dry, of course. So there's multiple ways you can use the Neo Colors. Let me get a water brush. When I'm using Neo Colors, I like to use a water brush just because it's the convenience of it for me. <clears throat> you can take your water brush or just dip a brush, but this is just easier to me to pull off of a crayon 
when the water's already in the brush. Okay, so you can just pull off and do like a wash based on pulling it off with the tip. You can also just color with it very highly concentrated and get it wet. Okay. The other thing you can do with them is in a, in like, this is a porcelain tray, especially if you want to mix colors, which I don't want to do right now, but I want to show you, you can put some on a porcelain tray or in some kind of a, you know, any kind of a palette that will, is, you know, non-porous, and then make a wash with that. Now this will be the exact same thing as that wash I did there. I just want to show you that uh, the, the benefits of having it in a palette like that is that you can do uh, blending. So I'm going to put some lime green in there and then you can like lighten it down, make other colors. Okay, so <clears throat> And when I use a water brush and Neo Colors, I, I like to use a Kleenex to clean off the brush because the Kleenex just soaks it up better than a paper towel. Okay. Oh, I was going to clean that. And it just wa it just picks right up off the porcelain. Nothing stains. Now you can't do that with acrylic. Acrylic you'll have to like chip off or peel up. Uh, but with the water based you know, neo colors or watercolors, then that, that's really handy. Okay, so let me make, let me write this down. Let me get a, where's my Sharpies? Here we go. Okay. You know, I got post it notes flying. I don't want to lose an address. Ugh. All right, so this is acrylic, no water. This is acrylic wash. Okay, and this is Neo 2. All right, one is um, a wash and concentrated. All right, just so that you can kind of see those, those two things. All right, so acrylic and Neo 2s. Are y'all asleep? <laughs> All right, now I'm going to do a couple other things. I'm going to need another piece of paper. Y'all still with me? <clears throat> let, me do, let me make sure my chat is scrolling here. Vicky Larkspur, Tumbleweed. I missed the little story with uh, maybe later somebody can tell me what how Vicky's trip to Barb's went because I missed it all rolling chat rolling by. Okay, so now a couple other things I wanted to show you can do. Uh, these are just the kids' watercolors, all right? So I'm going to get a, one of the blues here that's similar to what we're doing. This is just one of those cheap kids' watercolors. You can use that. Here's the, another brand. I think this one's the Artist Loft, but they're basically the cheap kid ones, okay? But then, you know, I got here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll do a quick wash with uh, some of the nicer. Uh, this is a Koi set, nicer. And basically what it, they're just, they're more concentrated. They're not as chalky, but I want to show y'all some of the differences. All right, so let me move my water brush and this brush. All right, so now I'm just going to use a kid's watercolor here. Okay. So that's all I want off of this. Then I'm going to get a... Mix up a little blue here. <clears throat> Mix up a little turquoise here. All right, so now this is more of a 
you know, higher grade uh, watercolor. Okay, it's not the exact same color. I'm not mixing the exact same color, but I want you to be able to see there. Okay. All right, so when we add color pencil, okay, kids, watercolor. This is koi watercolor. Just so you can see the properties of it when you go over it with, with color pencil. Because you can use any of this, all right? All right, now let's go to the ink tents, which are, these are Derwent water-soluble ink pencils, okay? They're ink pencils. Sorry for the flash in there with the camera. All right. And again, I'm going to try to find one that's one of these two. It probably, let me test it over here. Get the closest I can to probably maybe one more lighter. I'm just trying to keep them all sort of the same color. Okay. Again, with the ink tents, you can use it a couple different ways. You can use it straight on and water it down. Or you can take pull it off just like we did on the Neo colors. Okay. Now the thing about these, I got kind of a more green than turquoise, but anyway. The thing with these is they're more, uh, they're ink when they dry, not watercolor. So they're going to be less likely, yeah, they're going to dry permanent. Now, when I say permanent, do, does that mean 100%? I would say 99%. If you get them real, real wet again, they can move some, but not near like a watercolor pencil. Okay? Not near as a watercolor pencil. So this is Ink Tense. Derwent. Okay? This is Direct. In other words, it's just like directly the pencil. And this is off with water brush. Just so you can kind of see what the difference is. So there's the ink tents. All right, let me put these away. And again, they last forever. Same for the Neo Color 2s. Uh-oh, I knocked the bulb out. Oh, great. Hang on, guys. Oh, that might darken everything up. I just uh, knocked the light bulb out. All right, hang on. I'm going to go grab some coffee and grab a light bulb because I just bumped the light bulb and knocked it out. So hang on. <laughs> I needed coffee anyway. That was a sign. You need coffee. Okay, so let me change this light bulb real quick. This is hot. Let me get a paper towel so I can touch the hot light bulb. Yeah, that's true, Julie. That's true, Julie. Okay, catching my breath again. So that's the watercolor and the ink tints. Okay, so these are... I'm going to keep these chart. Neo 2. Acrylic. 
acryl. Oh, I'll put an L in there. Watercolor. Ink tints. What else? There's something else I wanted to do. There's one other thing I wanted to do. Oh, some ink. Let me move all this out of the way. All right. Um, let me see if I can grab a color that's pretty similar. Um, turquoise ink. Oh, there's some acrylic ink. We'll go with that. Not that everybody's going to get out acrylic inks. To uh, hey Barb, we just saw Vicky Tumbleweed here. All right, so real quick, I'm just going to put out a drop here. Let's just put out a drop, and it's not the exact color, you know, as everything else, but it's close enough to give you an example. All right, so now I'm going to get a, just a damp brush, no water in it, and I'm going to go with just acrylic ink solid, no water. Okay. Now I'm going to water it down a little, and then there's an ink wash. All right, so this is um, ink, ink wash, and this is acrylic ink, acrylic ink. Okay. All right. I think that's, I'm trying to think of anything else we could do. Oh, the only other thing I want to say is if you use crayons, like if you color with crayons, I love coloring with crayons, you cannot use color pencil. Let me do one just to show you. I'm not getting out my snippables. <laughs> But I do have a new box I got for 25 cents. Let's see if there's a turquoise kind of in there. Hang on. Might have to get out the bag of colors. I don't see a turquoise in here. How can a box of 24 not have a turquoise? All right, hang on. But we're not going to use, just saying, we're not using these. This is my box just for snipping. Here, you all take a sniff. They're just for sniffing. <laughs> and if y'all missed it, I do have another box of 24. That's my travel emergency crayon sniff box from Sister Woman. But in this case, I'm gonna just get the bag. Hang on. Oh, markers. Markers was the other thing I wanted to do. Markers. Okay, so here. Well, let's get into this bag here. Let's see if we can find a... I just want one little color of a swat, swatch of a color. Okay, that's kind of... I think something's melty with that one. Let me just find a... I just want a kind of a teal color. Why is it so hard to find a teal? Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of crayon there. Okay, there's crayon. Marker. Okay. This one will buy. Now, I'm not going to do... Um, I'm not going to do Copics or alcohol-based markers. This is just a water-based marker. Okay, let me put that down. I don't even know if I have an alcohol-based one. I think I gave them all to Cam. Uh, I might have a Sharpie. I'll look. Okay, water-based marker. Okay, so they're going to put markers. All right, let me see if I can find one. I mean, I have lots of Sharpies. I have a drawer of Sharpies. But I don't have any Copics or, you know, any of the nice ones, the blendable ones. Because Cam, I don't use them, so I gave them to Cam. Here we go. Let's test this. Okay. All right, so here's a 
Sharpie. And again, you got to realize that if you use uh, alcohol base like Sharpies and stuff, they're going to go through. See how the water based one did not go through? But the Sharpie is going through. Same thing if you use a Copic. These are go I'm going to go over all of these to show you what happens. Even the crayon, Crayola, which it won't work at all. But I want to show y'all. Okay, so if you, uh, a Copic or a Sharpie is going to go through on color book pages. Now, if you make a copy of your color book pages on a 110 card stock or specialty marker paper, then you can work with your Copics and Sharpies and stuff in your color books. Jess is the one to ask about Copics and paper and Copic paper and blending. So, you know, but this kind of paper just in your color books is not going to hold up to a Sharpie. It'll hold up to the water base as long as you don't just scrub, 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 scrub. You know, these little kids Crayola markers, it, it'll be fine, especially for small areas of coloring. Okay, but always do this kind of test with whatever you're doing. Okay, so this is a Sharpie. All right. All right. A sip of coffee here before we color. Hey, Rain. All right. So let me finish up this, and we'll start. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video for Happy Mail and a project of some kind. Now, again, I want to make sure that everybody this is dry. Okay, I don't want to melt that crayon, but I want to make sure my Neo colors, my make sure it's all dry before you go with color pencil. This ink wash is still damp. I can feel the paper is still damp. You want to make sure it's 100% dry. Otherwise, you're just going to be digging into... I don't want to melt that thing on. You're just going to be digging into wet paper and it'll tear. Okay. Hey, J Cats, Good to see you. Anybody else popping in? Orla? Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in on Impromptu. Don't forget Barb streams today at 2. Um, I don't know. Did you did you get to stream with Vicky at all, Barb? I did not see any tweets on it, so I don't know if you did or not. So hopefully uh, I didn't miss them. Okay. Now, I'm going to do black and white. I'm going to take black and white color pencils. So let me put the ink back. And dig out a nice black. I got one here. Let me sharpen them up just so you can see what happens on the different. Make sure this is black, not indigo. Okay. <laughs> you, you always got to check that. And one of the girls goes, put a piece of tape around it. And that's true. I should put a piece of tape around the indigo. I've got about five blacks and five whites always going at the same time. But indigo, you know, I usually only have a couple. All right. All right. Any, any questions, guys, before we go? And I was waiting to see what Barb said about recordings. No streams. Oh, your internet. Oh, no, Barb. And Barb and her husband always, and every season, also do... Uh, Santa, carved Santa's uh, claws man, carves them, and Barb paints them. Barb, if you want to put a link to anything in, feel free, or your uh, website where they can maybe find your um, Santas. Now, they are highly detailed, highly, they're carved, you know, weeks of carving and hours and hours and hours of painting. They're, they're not like the Santas you just go buy off of Michael's. So just be aware, they're very high quality. Everything Barb does is high quality, whether it's her journals, her books, her little, like her little houses that I have one of, her, anything Barb does is high quality. So just be aware 
you're not going to go down you're not going to get a five dollar santa <laughs> uh, so be look if you want some quality collectible hand carved santas hand painted santas oh my gosh you will not find any better anywhere than barbs okay uh, yeah, howtogetcreative.com. Thanks, Carrie, for the link. All right, so now I'm just going to go in here with every each um, each of these uh, charts or swatches with a black and a white, just so that'll be a, a good contrast so you can see. And then uh, we'll stop this recording and I'll start another one. Okay, acrylic, the washes, that's what I'm using as a base of these big animals here. Again, it wrinkles your pages. But by the time you get done like this, you really, I can't even hardly see any wrinkles at all. Okay. By the time you get done with your color pencil on top of all the washes, there's a layer of color pencil over this entire thing. By the time you get all that color pencil down, um, you're not going to see any wrinkles from the washes. Okay, here's the owls. Again, last look at these. The, you know, by the time I got done with all this, I don't see any wrinkles. I mean, I can feel a little bit, but it, it's not obvious. As it is when you first do a wash and you can see all the wrinkles. Okay, so just be aware. Alright, so now I'm going to take... A, uh, this is my favorite to go over. The acrylic, just my plain old acrylic, let me write down craft. Craft. And I use Americana. Okay, just to make sure in case anybody asks again. Alright, so I'm going to start with the black. Now I'm going to do like a little hard pressure and kind of blend it out on each thing. So I'm going to do kind of a hard pressure and blend out. You know what I did forget to show you? Let me do a color pencil. Okay, let's do down here. Because just to show you, you don't get the same effect with color pencil. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead down here and do a little swatch of color pencil. All right, so here is like a little harder pressure and then blending it out. Same thing with the white. I want you to see here how easy, and I bear, I didn't really, that's not a lot of pressure, but you see how great coverage you get? Thanks, Rain. See how, what great coverage you get over acrylic paint? Now, I'm going to try to do the same, well, I'll do it over here too, but I want a bigger swatch so you can see better. Okay, and this is rough. Let me put something under it. Okay, let me put a nice swatch of blue here. All right, now watch with the black. With hard pressure, I can pretty much cover up the blue. But if I go lightly over it, it you can still see the blue under it, which is good for blending. Okay, that's great for blending. But if you want to cover something up with the white, all right, now I'm going to put real hard pressure just so you can see how much pressure I'm putting on there. And it never gets perfectly white. Look at the difference there here. See the difference? This is white pencil on acrylic. This is white pencil pushing as hard as I can. You, do ne you never get white. It'll blend. You get blending effects and techniques. But if you want just white pencil, you can't get it on top of a color pencil. So let me just put that down here. I just want it on the chart there, but I wanted y'all to be able to see it. You see? Yeah, pris color. these are prismas. But you see how the white, you never get pure white again on top of color pencil. Like you can on top of acrylic. Alright, so I'm going to do this again. I'm going to kind of have hard pressure and then kind of blend it out. This is the wash. Now let me get the blue off. See how I always tell you to clean your pencils off? That's why you see all this right here. I'm cleaning my pencil off all the time. 
Okay. Alright. So again, this is the same effect. This is just a wash. Alright? It's just that you can't, yeah, they're Prismacolor Premier. My point is whatever kind of pencil you're using. You're not going to get pure white on top of color pencil. This is color pencil. This is color pencil. This is acrylic paint with color pencil. See how you retain the vibrancy of the pencil? And that's true whatever color. You can go over acrylic paint and cover it and it won't blend. Your pencil will not blend with the acrylic and that's the benefit. Okay? It's it won't blend. That's the benefit. You're you're wanting it not to blend. Here is color pencil on top of color pencil. You want it to blend. You want that effect here. But if you just want <laughs> You know, if you just want uh, to be able to do this, you're going to have to have something that the color pencil is not blending in with. So I did all this just so you can see different ways. We're going to do this on all of them. The effect that you get. So it's not that you can't, say, use watercolors. You can use watercolor in the same kind of way. All right. But it just has a little bit different tooth, and it's not quite as, see the difference? See how vibrant the acrylic is? How vibrant the, uh, the pencil is on the acrylic compared to the watercolor? It's because there's more tooth to the acrylic wash or solid, either one, than there is with the watercolor. There's just not the same tooth. You can even feel it. You know, you can feel the difference between acrylic paint and watercolor paint. So it does work. I'm not saying you can't do a wash. Let me make sure my pencil's clean there. It's not that you can't do a wash of, wa of uh, watercolor with the, the pencil on it. It's just not as vibrant. So can you see the difference? Yeah. And my favorite, I mean, you can use any. To me, the cheap craft paints are the best. Now, I just use the plain old Americana. It's not the satin, it's not the gloss, and it's, there's a new one out now. I think it's satin as well. And I haven't tried that with this here. I've tried satin paints, but I haven't tried the new Americana satin with this. So I don't know if you're going to get the same vibrancy and tooth that you get with just their $99 to $1.29, depending on, you know, you can get them on sale of 50 cents. But it's just these cheap ones. And I love Americana because they have such a variety of colors. They have such a variety of color. Okay? So again, you can see the difference between the paint and the watercolor. See the vibrancy? Okay? All right, so now here's the ink tints. Again, I'm going to go over the ink tins, and it covers fine. Let me sh let me sharpen my pencil again. But it doesn't give a tooth, okay? And I'm pushing real hard. Whoop, I pushed so hard I broke the lead, okay? <laughs> to show you that you just can't get the same vibrancy as you do with craft acrylic paint, okay? So let me push real hard and show you. Again, there's the comparison. See how vibrant that is? You just, it doesn't, it's not the same tooth. Oh, thanks, Linda. I, I really wanted to get this out in a, one little video here. <laughs> okay, again, the ink tins, the black goes over it fine, but if you're using a light color like white or another light color, I'm pushing as hard as I can. And I just, you cannot get the same white. Okay, now we're going to go on to the acrylic ink. Okay, here's the acrylic ink, the liquid, I think it was Liquitex acrylic ink. I'm pushing as hard as I can, and it's brighter than the watercolor, but it's not as bright as the craft paint. See the difference right there? Okay, so here's a wash of that ink. 
it, it feels the pencils feel just as they, they're going on smooth fine there's absolutely no tooth to it that's why they're just blending right on but to cover see again all right and i showed you the color pencil here color pencil white color pencil on top of blue color pencil will blend which you do want that you do want that in areas like i showed you on the snake here where after i did the wash after i did a wash of green on the snake this is just the wash there's no color pencil yet right here i took the two i took a dark color pencil and started going around each one of the scales okay but then to blend that blend that dark green i took an olive green and kind of just went right along the edge of the dark green to blend that's the blending you want okay that's the blending you want but if you want to cover like this well like like this <laughs> Okay, it won't, I'll show you with the white. That's a good example here. All right, let me, uh, let me cover one of these scales solid green. Okay, all right. So that scale right, sharpen the pencil. Hang on, guys. <laughs> all right, this scale right there is solid color pencil. I, I, put, I put a coat of solid color pencil on there. Now watch, here's the white on top of it. You can see it a little bit, and I'm pushing hard. See the white on top of the color pencil? Now watch the white on top of a wash. Whoops, I broke the pencil right again, hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the only thing about Prismacolor. Okay, all right, so here I'm gonna go on top of just one of the wash. All right, so there's on top of a wash there is on top of just color pencil pencil on pencil pencil on acrylic can you see the difference i'm sure you can so that's the benefit of having an underpainting of acrylic any place that the color pencil is not if you want to highlight you're going to be able to get that bright vibrant highlight with the white that you can't get if you're going white or a light color on top of pencil okay can y'all let me know if that made sense hey ash anybody else popping in hey jamie just saw your hello and i know there's a lag in chat Yeah, I'll put it on YouTube, Cheryl. I'll put it as its own video. It makes sense? Okay. So again, color pencil and color pencil. Color pencil on acrylic. All right, so let me finish these real quick. We'll go over the Neo Color 2s again. The color pencil goes over it fine, but you're not going to get oh, Prismacolor, quality control, <laughs> quality control Prismacolor, Barrel and Sanford at quality control, and this one is, is even pretty well lined up. Okay, oh, I'm going to get a different pencil. <laughs> All right, let's go with another pencil. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm pushing really hard, and I want y'all to see that it goes over it, just not as well, okay? So it's not that you can't use other underpainting things, but you're not going to get the same coverage with the white or light color pencil over dark as you do with the acrylic. That's why I like acrylic paint under my pencils. Okay, 
uh, okay, we got one more. Okay, the markers. Okay, again, it'll go fine over here, and then this is the Sharpie. And again, the marker is probably the second best thing to go over the than the acrylic. It's not quite as vibrant. Let me see if I can put those together. It's not quite as vibrant, but it's the be the next best. That's the water-based, that's a Sharpie. Water-based marker, acrylic paint. So it's like the next best. Okay, do I get them all? Do I finish them all? Oh, and crayon. Crayon, you just cannot go over. See how the wax just pulls off? This is a color pencil over a wax crayon. Look, <laughs> see? You just can't color pencil on top of crayons. Did the white one too. It just it basically just pulls the wax right off, see. So that's what happens if you try to put color pencil over crayons. All right, so any questions real quick, guys? Hopefully this is helpful. Again, if you do an acrylic wash, like I'm doing on these large animals, I normally don't do large areas. Like, let's go back over to the flamingo that I'm working on. I don't normally do large washes of acrylic on anything because it wrinkles. But in this book, I'm doing it knowing it'll still wrinkle. But by the time I get everything done with color pencil coated on top, you're not going to see those wrinkles very much. But you will see them as you go through the book. You're going to see where it's all wrinkled from those washes. But if you just use solid acrylic paint, if you just use solid acrylic paint in your color book, you're going to cover up all those little you know, all this stuff, all the little feathers and all the little, you cover that up. That's why, that's the reason behind not using just a solid pink. Because I'm covering up all those pretty details that, that the book is, you know, got going for it. All the little color book details. If I just put a solid coat of uh, yellow on his beak, I'm going to cover up every bit of that. That's the reason for using the wash. I can still see the scales in the snake, the feathers in the birds, to go in there and shade and highlight with color pencil. So I'm checking for questions or anything. Thanks, J Cats. So, you know, people say, well, why don't you just not put any water in it and just put, you know, acrylic paint solid with no water? You won't get the wrinkle. Well, that's true. You might get a little bit, but you're covering up every bit of the color book ink, uh, you know, detail if you go solid. If you just do a watercolor wash, like I said here, if you just do a watercolor wash, that's fine too. You will still see the feathers, but you're not going to get that intensity when you go over it with your light color pencils. So that's the benefit of using the acrylic wash over or as opposed to watercolor or any of these other mediums. Okay? So I'll wait a minute and see if there's any questions on why I do this technique. Why I use acrylic washes as opposed to watercolor. Why I don't use solid acrylic paint on the color book. Because if I just went in here with a solid teal, I'd lose every bit of those little wing details. Okay? All right, so let me just make sure there's no questions, and we'll stop this recording and start a new one. So, why color over the black background? You mean with the color pencil? Okay, so she's asking, like, I paint this out with black acrylic paint. 
a couple reasons. I, I like the velvet look of the color pencil. Even when I have a solid, I don't have anything here that's not. If I don't go over this with a color pencil, it doesn't have that nice velvety look. You can still see paint, you can still see paint strokes and I can anyway. I can see it. You may not be able to. Um, if you paint that solid black with just solid black acrylic, okay? I just like it that way with a coat of black paint over it. Okay, hang on, my son-in-law is messaging me. Okay? I hope it's helpful. <laughs> that way you can see that it's not that you can't use any of this stuff in your color books or any other project for that matter. But if you want to use color pencil over it, it's good to know what's going to happen. Nothing is going to be as vibrant as acrylic. None of this is going to be as... Now, black over any of it works. Solid black. But if you want highlights... Okay, if you want if you want white, light yellow, cream color, anything like that, there's nothing works better as a base than plain old crap paint, non-gloss, non-satin. All right, let me stop this video, guys, and we're going to move on. I got happy mail and other things to show. But again, I'm loving this color book, Anamorphia, by Michael O'Mara. Um, they're out of the UK. And again, I also showed how to be a dog. I did read a little bit out of this. It's hilarious. So recommend that. Uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to say is they have a new one, not by this uh, artist, a different artist, I believe, another animal book coming out the end of November. So, but anyway, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really loving the, the detail in these animals and all the little... I like how they have funny little characters, little doodle characters mixed in with the realistic. I like that. Um, the only thing that, I, and I don't call it a complaint, but the only thing that I do not like about the book is getting in the, in the crack there. You know, trying to get your paint and your color pencil and, you know, that the, the extends off the animals are on two pages and things like that. I don't like that. Don't like that. I don't care if it's a double page spread, but when they go across, that means you can't, you know, cut this out and use it or frame it or, you know, have like there's a perfect example. There, you know, it's a double page and, and it's getting in there. That's a little tricky. But other than that, I love, love the artwork. I love the book. So there we go, guys. So hopefully that was helpful. I will put this up on a, on a YouTube later. So hang on and let me save this video and I'll be right back. Thanks guys for watching. Sample later. I, I know I've shown it briefly in, in between different shows where I want to test out different things and what color pencil does with the different things. I might do, do us a little chart. I told y'all to do a little chart, but I didn't make me one because I kind of know what they do because I work with them all, but I might do a little chart with that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got done so far. But the reason I want to put parchment between the ones that I've already finished, like for instance here. So I finished these two owls. I did post pictures of it on Twitter and Instagram and in my Facebook color book album. I did make an album if y'all didn't already go look at it. I made an album on Facebook that's public. Anybody can go look at it. You don't have to follow me on Facebook to go look at it. And... Um, I, I just put in everything color book related, new color books, color books I finish, color books I talk about, pages, what to do with color books. I, lit, I linked a video, one of my YouTube recordings from here, you know, that we upload to YouTube on how to do things with the color books and stuff like that. So I just made a whole album um, of color books in Facebook so you can go kind of just look at that. But anyway, the reason I want to put a piece of parchment or something, even just a piece of paper, parchment's just thin and it does the job, is because now if I go to color, say, on this page, if I start bearing down 
with color pencil on this side. These two pages are going to start, um, you know, getting on each other. So if you have something between it, if I start bearing down on here, it'll just get on the parchment, not on the pe next page. So you want to have some, in between the pages that you finish, okay? You don't want this, this uh, color pencil, crayon, or whatever you're using to be smashed onto the, this side. So if you put a piece of paper in between, when you work on this page, it won't mess up the, those two pages, okay? Uh, and it's always good to have something behind, like whenever you're working on, like if I'm working on here, just to have something behind this so that, larger of course, but have something behind here so you're also not denting the next page. Now, my pages are getting a little wrinkled, and that's because of the technique I'm using in this particular book of acrylic washes. Because of the big areas that I want to wash out, um, not wash out, but put a wash of color on, uh, it will wrinkle. And that's why I told y'all, if you don't want wrinkled pages, don't do large washes of color. But in this book, I'm really, I want large washes of color, so I'm not being concerned about the little bit of wrinkle that it's getting, and I'm just rolling with it. So uh, if y'all have any questions, put them in caps. So again, let me show you what I've done so far. So far, I've only done a few washes and I think maybe two and a half, three pages in here so far. So this is what I mean by the wash. Okay, so right here I took two colors of acrylic paint. You can do it with watercolor or your neo colors or whatever, but I like to use a thick, if I'm gonna do color pencil, the wash, the acrylic gives you a tooth to your paper, okay? A little bit of something for your color pencil to grab onto. <clears throat> Somebody did ask me on YouTube if I gesso, clear gesso, white gesso. I never really, honestly, guys, and it's very rare that I use gesso on anything. In art journals, on color books, on my port, I just do not use gesso really at all on anything. Not white gesso, not black gesso, not clear gesso. If I want to get a coat of white on something, I just use acrylic paint. If I want a coat of black on something, I just use black acrylic paint. Uh, I know there's different properties and benefits to using gesso to seal your pages for different purposes. Uh, you know, some of the stencil techniques that Paula uses and stuff like that. I don't really do those techniques, and so I don't really, I just don't use gesso. So just to answer that question. But in this case, this is this color. and So I just took two colors of my acrylic paint, watered them down a little bit. And again, I always say, don't water your acrylics down. Well, if you want to do a wash, you know, you you can water it down. But the main reason I tell you not to do that is because, for one, on the large area, it's going to wrinkle. That's the, that's the problem with using watered down acrylic paint. It will wrinkle your pages. And uh, so you have to be prepared that if you're going to do this, what I'm doing here, your pages will wrinkle, okay? <laughs> you just got to either don't do this technique uh, or, you know. Now, acrylic paint, watered down acrylic, light, like in just a tiny little area, like right here and that, it's not going to do, it's not going to wrinkle it. But I'm doing a full-on wash of this paint, and so it will wrinkle, okay? So if y'all have any questions, ask. I'm trying to cover everything, uh, and I know I've said it all before, but, you know, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> y'all know me when I'm doing something. I'll repeat because that's the process I'm working it out. Okay, so <clears throat> then I also had a question on do I go back over the black areas, and, and most of the times I do. Now, I did not go back over the black areas when I tried to wash out those fairies. Let me show you here. When I tried to wash out these girls right here, I wanted these fairies that I, I colored out of the other book, the fairy book, and cut them out and put them on a scrapbook paper. I wanted the, the black to be very grayed out. So like those dots, they're really black 
in the book and they're black if I wanted to go back over over them like I will on here but in this case I was trying to gray it out to make it fit with the scrapbook paper which has no harsh black so that's why that's kind of faded out same for this one I instead of keeping that dark dark black I went over it with the light blue to gray it out because there's no harsh black in the background okay but other than wanting to gray it out for a per this kind of purpose I will go back over that to make it dark again so the qu answer to the question is yes I do go back over the dark black areas with a black pencil okay so hope that answers that question all right so and you can see it's a little wrinkled but again I'm not letting that bother me in this case so I've already gone through and showed this book so I just want to all right so here is the same page here you know just the full double page spread where I've done the same thing with the wash of those two uh, watered down acrylic paints but again see the wrinkle see it all wrinkled up there <clears throat> But by the time I do both sides of the page, it's kind of like my art journal where I'm, I'm adding tons of layers of collage and mixed media and paint and collage and all kinds of stuff, matte medium. You know, by the time I get done, same thing for the art cards. You would think that it would be, you know, you could, the same thing even in a composition book. By the time you get all this, you know, work done on it, both sides done, the wrinkling is not going to show that much. It, it sounds, I like the way it actually, I kind of like the way it sounds. It kind of is a little, you know, more crispy sounding because of the wrinkles. All right, so I did this one last week, just did a wash of the blue-gray just to kind of, again, show you how it starts, okay? So it's just a wash of gray, and now I'll go back in there with color pencil and do the shading and blending. All right, so here's some cheetahs here. Just a wash of the ochre over them. And then let's see what else. The lion face, Just a, this is just a wash of ochre, because that's just like the base. It's just like the base. All right, there we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to coffee. I need a refill and art in the morning. I'm Dee Dee, and I got some happy mail. Um, I'll show you some things I've done in my Anamorphia color book. And I, but first, we're gonna do happy mail. And I also got this "How to Be a Dog" <laughs> from Michael o O'Mara in UK. It's a um, it's a, a a a publisher, and they're also the ones that publish. Anamorphia. So if y'all don't follow them, go follow Michael O'Mara on Twitter and you will find all kinds of other cool books and book publishers through them. They're real, it's just t tons and tons of books and inspiration. And uh, they also just posted this morning that there's a new animal book coming out in November. Enabler alert. Where's Eileen? <laughs> Enabler alert. <laughs> so thanks everybody for being here I said good morning to everybody before I hit record um, except we hootie comes in late every morning she comes in late now <laughs> so anyway thanks everybody for being here and uh, yes I have had my coffee dab I've had more than a pot of coffee we get up early around here you know I've been uh, I've been up for some hours by the time you see me stream at 9 a.m. Anyway, so I have Happy Mail Show. I wanted to read a couple of excerpts out of this real quick. I'm not, I'm, I thought about maybe like start my streams off with a, something funny out of this book because it is hilarious. I'm just going to read a couple things. Uh, <laughs> Beeline Facts, 10 Things Every Dog Needs to Know About Cats. I love this one right here. <laughs> when a cat arches its back, it's a sign it's being threatened and is about to attack. It is not an open invitation for you to try to run underneath of it. <laughs> they can squeeze into places you can only dream about. Do not try to emulate them. <laughs> uh, they can get away with murder. For example, a cat jumping on a table to eat the remains of a chicken dinner is cute. If you try it, it's dirty. 
So there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. And then the other one that I just want to quickly just read a couple out of. And what it is, it's from the dog's point of view. From the dog's point of view. And it's broke out alphabetically in all kinds of topics. Like um, that was under cats. This one's under costumes. And it just has tons and tons. I'll read a couple of the topics to you. Um, but like, for instance, costumes. Reindeer ears. And I'm not even reading the, the paragraph about it. I'm just reading some of the little bits. Not strictly a costume as such. This is more an accessory that clips to your head and makes it look like Dr. Frankenstein was busy with you and Rudolph. <laughs> the Christmas Elf. Very demeaning. Green felt is so 1980s. Well, anyway, and then they just have all kinds of things. Um, drool. Um, calories and under exercise calories that are burned kennel names grooming um and, and I, I love the little illustrations and i did find the uh illustrator on twitter as well and followed her and uh so anyway it's just so so stinking cute let me see needy owners puppy dog eyes how to make puppy dog eyes. Tilt your head down. Think of something really sad. Raise your eyes so, so you're looking through your lashes. Hunch your shoulders. Keep shifting your weight from one paw to the other. <laughs> That's what my grandkids do. <laughs> oh. oh, shoes, sleeping, smelling things, squirrel. Uh-oh, Carrie. I don't know if I should read that one to you. Um, <laughs> there are two things you need to know about squirrels. <clears throat> one, no matter how hard we try and fight the feeling, we instinctively want to chase and catch them. Two, no matter how hard we try, we never can. <laughs> but all the little illustrations, everything's so cute. I just think it's hilarious. Hilarious. The doggy do list. Wake up, sleep, forward stretch, yawn, backward stretch, drink. And it's a little checklist, you know. Scratch left ear, scratch right ear. And it just goes on and on. Toilet paper, vegetables, vets. Um, so I might read a little bit at the beginning of the shows because it's just so stinking cute. So I'm going to have to get this for my mom for Christmas. Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> so anyway, I just uh, <laughs> just wanted to point that out to you. It's really, really so funny. So funny. So thanks for sending that to me, Michael O'Mara. And um, yeah, they're also the ones that publish Anamorphia, which I've been working in. And I am putting... A piece of parchment in between the ones I finished. Here's why. And I want to I'll talk some more about color books. I think I'm going to do a little 